All right, welcome back to the Paper Stack Podcast. My name is Rick Allen. My co-host and very charming and handsome man is Brett Jonathan Berkey. Yes. How you doing? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are. We're in December. Yes, it's very true. It's that time of the uh, the year where if you have kids, you know about this. You've got the elf on the shelf. Yeah, the elf on the shelf came early this year for me. Yeah. No. That's so tough. <laughs> So yeah, what happened? So the day after Thanksgiving, I was taking the stuff out of the attic and, you know, handing it down to my wife. And we have two elves on the shelf because I, I don't know why, but like we have two. And so I saw one and I was like, oh, I got to, my daughter was hanging out on the on the floor and like looking at the Christmas stuff. And, and then I, so I hit the one right behind the corner. I was like, OK, I'll come back for that on like the, you know, whatever, November 30th. And so I'll hide this one. And I, and I came to take something out of the attic and all of a sudden, like right next to my daughter, the elf on the shelf fell and, and, it, and it just landed there. And I, I was holding the box, she's like, oh, Twinkles is here. And I'm like, and I looked at my wife, she, I was like, Twinkles? Twinkles. And I was like, Twinkles and Sparkles. And so I was like, I was like, what the, what the hell, where did that come from? She's, she's like, she's like, did, was she in the attic? I was like, no, I think she heard us put, with the Christmas stuff that might have attracted her. And so... She's like, oh, cool. And then she went in and got chocolate and wrote notes. And I, then we, I messed up one night playing hide and go seek where I'd, I'd move her like every, like, she'd go count. So you have to go move the elf on the shelf. And so now. But they use it once a day, but I was doing it. And so when did yours, when did yours get, it was before Thanksgiving? It, yeah, it was the day after Thanksgiving. So I was like, so you yeah. tacked, you <laughs> tacked on like an extra seven days of moving yeah, the elf. Yeah. And I was like, dang it. And then so. Today the other one came, so now I got two that have happened to move around at night. It's just ours like, is chuckles. <laughs> chuckles. He showed up this morning. Uh, yeah, I, I, I almost forgot. My wife last night she's like, "Don't forget, don't forget." And then we had a late paper stack meeting, and after that I went to sleep. This morning I woke up. I was like, "You forgot? Yeah, I forgot. You do it." So, <laughs> all right. Anyway, so we're gonna. Uh, I guess top topic today is we're going to cover working with the financial calculator, the ten B I I. Calculator, and then I'll show you a spreadsheet that we use. Um, when you see the spreadsheet, it's it's there's a lot to it. It's something that came whenever we were with Node School, and it kind of just we built on top of it and started adding more stuff. So it's pretty intimidating. The 10 BII you're going to look at it and say, okay, that's much easier to use. So we'll get into it right now. What we've done is we we found a an asset on PaperStack. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the 10 BII and we're going to look at the spreadsheet. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at an asset that we pulled up on PaperStack. This is one of MWM's assets. And this one here, you can see the purchase price is 48,000. What you want to do is you want to come down and you want to start figuring out all the details of the loan. So I'm going to go right in here to the 10 BII calculator and I'm going to plug in the purchase price is 48,000. I'm going to plug in the purchase price is 48,000. Let's go back there. And you want to make this a negative or you want to make the payments a negative. I always make the purchase price a negative because I think I'm spending it. So I'm going to hit negative and I'm going to hit the pre. This is the present value, PV. So I plug that in. I'm looking and I've already started playing with this. You can see the the actual principal and interest payment is 372.29. And we're going to do that for the payment. There's 262.6 payments left. 262.6 payments left. And now I want to figure out what's my yield. So I just hit I. And that's going to tell me that right now if I paid 48000 for that, it's going to be a 7.49% yield. So 6.5% interest rate, figuring in the discount, and it's going to give me a 7.49. So... If you're one of the people like we've talked about on your um, on prior podcasts where you're like, look, my target yield, you've got a target that's higher than 7.49. I'm going to go ahead and say maybe my target's 10. Okay. Very easy to do once you've plugged in the numbers. You literally just type in 10 for the interest rate and then you touch present value and that's going to tell you what you need to purchase the asset for in order to get a 10% yield. And there you go. You need to buy this asset for $39,620.98.
That's pretty exact. Pretty exact. <laughs> And you'll see it on there. You'll see a lot of bids on there that are exact because they know what their yield's going to be. Now, if you're going to figure in servicing costs and stuff like that, you would obviously calculate that into your equation. And we're going to go down here and look at the Zestimate. And we see that this house is worth roughly by Zillow is 164.3. Take 15 grand off, call it 150. Right? We'll just build in some cushion. So you can see you're in a really good um, position where they've got equity in the property. They only owe $52,093.47. Uh, total payoff is $52,386.30. Uh, that sounds like there's an escrow shortage in there um, or it's the bankruptcy, so it could be the remaining balance due on the bankruptcy. So let's go ahead and let's look at, let's look at this calculator. We're gonna plug the numbers into the calculator. As you can see, I've already kind of got them in there. 150,000 is the asset value. You have to mess with it a little bit. This one obviously has had some payments, so I'm just gonna put in the principal balance, the interest rate, and that's gonna generate this number here, which is 372.29, pretty exact. The term is 263 payments, that's how much is left. No payments have been made. And then I'm going to put in there that there is a balance, a, uh, 263. I'm going to say that the, there's a balloon of 263, which tells you that it's, it, there's negative $148.67. Basically, that means that it's not quite 263 payments, not quite 262 payments. So you'll see something on paper stack where it says 262.6, where if I go back and I look at it, go back and do that. And um, basically what you want to do is right down here, I see if I'm buying at a 7.5% yield, it's going to be roughly 47000 If I want to put in the 10, it's going to get you to 39620 So not exactly what it was on, actually it's pretty darn close. It's, uh, it's 12 cents off. So there's a lot of ways to get there. This calculator I said is pretty, um, pretty beefy, pretty impressive. There's a lot of things you can do in here. Calculate, you know, the start date, the term, what's the end date. We've got some monthly housing expenses, so you can figure out DTIs. And then down here on this calculator, you can look at, you know, no quote partials. If I'm going to quote a partial on this thing, it'll tell me what I pay for it, what my yield is. And then there's a lot of other stuff in here. It'll give you the actual purchase price. It'll give you a purchase partial chart. Tells you, you know, what's the payoff? When am I getting it back based on the numbers you put in? Gives you an amortization schedule. So a lot of different stuff on this particular spreadsheet. It's a pretty beefy spreadsheet. Kind of intimidating. I think it's always easier just to go ahead and use the 10 BII because mm -hmm. you can plug the numbers in. And as you see, it is very, very easy. That's pretty interesting, Rick. I mean... That's a beefy calculator. I the mean, calculator's beefy. Uh, there's a like it. It's just it's packed full of stuff, and we've added so much stuff on top of here. Like most of this stuff over here, I've added. Um, I've you know on the on the inputs over here at the partials chart. We've there was just one, and we added a bunch of other ones. In what there. are those different types of yields or offers or? Right. So you're like, okay, well, what you know, what if I want um, an 18% yield. Oh man, I just butcher it. This is gathering all the data from somewhere. It, it gives, okay, that's what it's from. It's from there's these three different charts here. So, like, it's it's a bit, I haven't used the partial stuff in a long time. I have to go back through and refresh it. But at the end of the day, this is this is really the what you're looking for. This, this screen right here, because you can do a lot of different things in here. Um, if, if there's a wholesaler in there and they're making, they're making a profit, you know, say you're, you're brokering a deal, you want to put $3,000 on the deal. Well, that means then you got to buy it from the seller for 36, 620 in order to sell it at a 10% up here. Um, if you know, if you're like, okay, well, what happens if I bought 50 payments down here? And that's going to tell you, well, that's, that's a nine, 9% 9 yield. That's your interest rate. Okay. Well, what if I bought a hundred payments? All right, well, that's a 13% yield if you're going to get it for 20000 So there's there's a lot of different ways that you can use this calculator. I, I use literally the this part up here, everything above the quote partial. This is where I, if I'm using it, this is what I, I do. But most of the time, I'm, I'm here on the 10BII.
because it's super easy for me to adjust my interest rate and give me like, hey, where do I need to pay? Where do I need to buy this deal? Right? right. And you can work your numbers backwards and forwards. You can kind of get in there and see, does this all tie out? You plug in all the, just the standard information and you know, it's like, okay, well, it was a 6.5% interest rate. So that should be roughly what the, what the payoff is. And if you go back and look- What is the PV stand for? Present value. Present. What, what am I buying this for? What's the present value? That's what this and is. The, uh, the number of payments remaining. And the I or Y or? Your uh, yield. Your yield. Mm -hmm. And then the payment is that, like I said, the important things is to make sure that you make the present value or the payment negative, and whichever one you make negative, you make the other one positive whenever you're plugging that information All right, in so, to, so to recap for the people that are watching this, do you mind, because that was a lot of information thrown at them, um, the 10 BII, get that calculator. Right. I so think it's 10 bucks. It's worth it. It's worth it. Can you can you do it, maybe just one, just do the whole thing on this calculator one more time just for me. <laughs> so just, I can see, so, cause I, I watched it the first time, I need to see it a second time. Just for you, okay, we can go look at, um, how about this? How about we find another, another okay. asset in there, right? We'll just go we'll pick out another one. Thousand keys. Or... Let's look at thousand keys. We'll look at this deal right here, okay. So we're looking at this deal, and we see that it's deed of trust. It's performing. Uh, origination date was August 26, 2022. So this one is fairly straightforward. It's, it's had a few payments. So let's go ahead and start plugging in the numbers. So they're going to sell it for 71.1. 71.1. So 71,100. Right. And so I'm going to make it a negative. I'm going to put it into the present value. The present value is seventy-one thousand dollars. Right. And now the principal and interest payment is seven seventy-four forty-seven. Seven seven four point four seven. That's the payment amount. That's the payment amount. That's the principal and interest payment amount. Okay. 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 So the number of payments remaining is three hundred and fifty-seven. Okay. And that's going to tell you, so right now it's got a 9.9% .9 interest rate. When right. I hit this, you're getting a 12.77% yield, right? So if I wanted to hit 14% yield, that's my number. It's a newly originated loan. Um, I just want to be there. I'm going to put that in to the interest rate and say that's what I want to hit. And then I'm going to hit present value because that's what I want to pay for it, right? right. This is our purchase price. And it's going to say, okay, if you want a 14, you got to buy it for 65327 I got it. You got it. There I got it. it. I got it. Okay, so I'm getting it. All right, so that's, that's really cool. And the good thing about what this is doing is that it's taking away the not knowing, like, like, it makes you an educated buyer. Like when you're, when you're doing it like this, it's, it's, it's not, there's a, no yeah. emotion. So another cool thing you can do with this is you can kind of back into a price that you can sell something for okay. on, uh, if you're gonna do owner financing. Owner right? financing, okay. So let's say, I mean, there's a deal that, that came across my desk. House is worth 200, property is, they're selling it for 119.9, so 120. Okay. And it doesn't really need much work, they put, a bunch of work in there if you're gonna go ahead and rehab it and try to get max dollars on a flip. But what, what you can do is you can sell this to somebody, owner finance. Right, okay. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are unbankable, mm -hmm. but they've got money to put down. So, if you look at this, so let's say there's a, a $200,000 house you're gonna sell it for, you're gonna owner finance it, and you're gonna take 20 grand down. Okay. Right? So your loan that you're making to somebody is gonna be 180,000, right? Right. Make that there, put that to present value. Present value. Next thing you wanna know is, okay, like, well, what can they afford? Uh, maybe they can afford a thousand bucks a month, right? We'll make that our payment. Payment. We'll give it to them for 360 months, and that means you can charge them an interest rate of 5.3%. Eh, that's okay, but it's not great. Well, let's look at like what happens if we can go ahead and find somebody who can afford fifteen hundred dollars a month for the payment. Next thing you know, you got a nine point four percent interest rate that That's you can they can charge them, right? Right. <clears throat> if you want to then say, okay, well, I want to sell this, I want to know that I'm gonna be able to sell this at a twelve to somebody because I know I want to push it out, I want to make it go quick, a twelve percent interest rate. Somebody's jumping all over that if it's a performing loan, they got twenty grand in the deal. Go ahead and type in 12, 
sell your interest, put it as your interest rate, and right. then type present value. So now you're going to sell the loan, the $180,000 loan, for $145,000. Well, you're into it for a hundred because we took twenty grand down. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you're into it for one hundred five. We'll say because you had some costs. closing costs, odds and ends, marketing costs. That means one hundred five. We're really easy math. One forty five minus one hundred five is walking with forty 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 thousand yeah. dollars on a hundred and twenty thousand dollar investment. You know, you, that's, that's huge. What is it? I mean, that's huge. What is it? But it allows you. What this does is it allows you to sort of back into numbers and figure out how are they going to work. Right? I could right. I backed into the payment. Where do I need this payment to be? What kind of a borrower am I looking for? Somebody obviously we want to have somebody who's got money down, but we're we're using this to kind of show us okay the payments, interest rates. Let's do this. What if it's what if we do a, a shorter term? Right? Uh, okay. Oh, so geez. so a shorter term. I'm selling this uh, 145. I got to sell it. I can I make it a uh, find somebody who can make a 10.95 percent return on a shorter shorter investment. Right. So there's a lot of different little options in there on what you can and can't do. And this it's just the 10 BI is such a powerful calculator. It's just, you know, there's tons of financial calculators out there. I love this one because it's on my on my phone and it's kind of dummy proof for what, no, I'm, cool. what I'm using it for. Yeah, no, I downloaded it. I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> so that's it, man. That's, a, you know, there's the spreadsheet, there's the calculator. At the end of the day, they're both powerful. That's how you can kind of back into your numbers, know what your yield's going to be. It'll tell you where you need to put your offer in there. It'll give you a little more insights on actually submitting offers and really understanding as a seller then, okay, what's where am I probably going to end up selling this? If I'm looking for somebody who... Who's got a who's happy with an eight or a ten or a twelve, and you'll have all those numbers there, and that way you can, you know, structure your deals up front the right way. You can have an idea when you're selling it, what you're going to be selling it for, and it allows you to put together a package and market it. That's awesome. And so these deals you just put on Craigslist or something like that, and they go or Facebook well, Marketplace. Well, yeah, there's there's a lot of different there's a lot of different ways to get it out there. Right now, you, that should be like the least of your worries. No, I'm just you're saying marketing is something. Yeah, well, I'm the marketer. So. Yeah, yeah, no, but there's a lot of different um, <laughs> mediums out there that you can start pushing out your 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 deals through. Um, but it all comes back tying it back in. It's all really about the calculator, understanding how to use it, and understanding it's a very powerful tool. That's awesome, really, Rick. That was really eye opening for me. Um, I'm sure I open for some of you guys out there, guys and gals. If you have specific questions about the calculator, I would say there is a tutorials um, that I, when you download the app, they have a, a YouTube channel that it links to. If you just go and hit the little three, three, the hamburger menu is what they call it, but little three lines, and then you'll see it'll have a link to tutorials, mm -hmm. and it goes through everything from doing an amortization schedule, understanding future value, like every little aspect of it. I haven't got very far with it, but um, I definitely think it's something that if you're an investor, <laughs> that's just like a must have. You know, like yeah, it this is. is part of your, you know, it's just that's just very important to have. So that's it for this one. Um, hope you guys got a lot out of it. Yeah, well, if you have something that you want us to cover specifically, remember Rick's the smart guy that's got all the answers in his head. <laughs> and then if you're looking for more education and want to really ramp up your education, we do have the Academy. Uh, you can pay in three payments. I kind of got, uh, Rick mentioned that we, that we finance it for you. And I kinda, yeah, we'll I, finance it for you. <laughs> finance it for you. You can do it three payments, but it gives you access to ask questions specifically on the videos. The, the calculators that Rick's using are actually in there. You know, like there's a lot of, a lot of tools that we have. That, that exact calculator is not there because it's not mine. So I had to read. read. Oh, because you got that. Yeah, one. because that's somebody else's. I don't want to sell somebody else's stuff. Oh, that's, that's the I have a condensed yeah. version of it that's, you know, will do just about everything you needed to do. I can't imagine you're going to get in there and say, okay. Yeah, that one's a little beefy. That was a lot. Yeah, so. But I still use it. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Well, good stuff. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. Alrighty, bye.